Hello everybody and welcome to The Real Housewives Edit. My name is Elle and I am here to talk about the two loves of my life, editing and housewives. Well you guys, New Jersey is back and it is back with a bang. I did a poll on my channel asking you guys how much of you actually are loving this season, like Teresa loves her pignoli cookies. 60% of you said that you were loving it, 40% of you gave it a sprinkle cookies rating. I think actually when the first couple episodes of a season are not that great and they're kind of building up to storylines that are potentially coming down the pike. I actually think those seasons are almost better than the ones that start with way too much stuff all up front. So I have a lot of high hopes for the storylines and for the characters of New Jersey. I do, however, have some reservations, shall I say, about one of the new cast members, but I'm going to be talking about that later on in my video as we kind of cover this scene. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for coming to the live last week where I talked about Potomac and the stream got shut down, unfortunately. I think it was from Candace's song. I actually heard from one of you in the comments section saying that there are a lot of Bravo fan accounts and YouTube channels and things that are getting more flags lately for using clips and I wonder if I'm <laughs> one of those. Apparently someone at NBC has something against people using clips. I personally think it's a huge mistake to go into that territory just like the commenter did because the fandom of The Real Housewives to me is one of the parts that keeps me watching. Uh, I love the shows, I love, love, love the shows, but there's something about being sort of in the community of people who are all obsessed with it too. And I think that that fandom comes from, you know, creators doing stuff online to kind of bolster the shows. I'll get off my soapbox, but all to say, I am working on ways that won't take away from actually breaking down the editing. I know some of you say, you know, do it at two times speed or put a filter over it or whatever to not get those flags um, on YouTube. But unfortunately, we are breaking down the little moments, the timing, the speed, the way things look. So if I alter that, it's gonna be hard to really, you know, break it down. I wrote Andy Cohen a letter. Maybe you guys can tweet him, send him a DM on Instagram. Let's get our creators out of creator jail because we're not trying to like, you know, show the episodes and have people not watch the shows. I actually want to encourage people to watch the shows even more on this channel. So anyway, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. Let's just take real life out of our brains for a second, which is what these shows are for. And let's get into some Jersey. Let's watch. I don't have issues with the Oh Lord. my Lord God. Had with Drown me, me in the Pool okay, so this is after, you know, they're at this mozzarella party, right? And Jen is arguing with Dolores and she's arguing with Margaret. And so, you know, they show, it's just after a commercial break, they show the house, they show kind of like a sweeping into the house, this long shot. As you're seeing that house, you're hearing Jen, you know, start into her monologue against Margaret. I don't have issues with Dolores. Oh, That's just what we call a pre-lap, which is basically where you can hear the voice before you actually see the person talking um, by showing that establishing shot of the house it's reminding you where we are we are at this new person's house I'm not gonna say I'm gonna get anyone's names right because I don't remember anyone's name but we are at a new cast members house who I actually really like I think she's got some genuine stuff to her um, but we'll get more into her in a minute you. I don't know babe you don't care so Dolores who we're good what the f so to me, that little part right there was so strange. Like Jen's, you know, doing her Jen thing. She's going off. She actually has some similarities to Jen Shaw. Now that I'm thinking about it as I'm saying her name, the sort of like uh, burn it all down <laughs> mentality. Like I'm going to, you know, like burn all the bridges and say the rudest things and hopefully people will come back for me. I think as a cast member, I prefer uh, Jen on The Real Housewives of New Jersey to Jen Shaw. I mean, besides Sides for like the um, the fraud and the taking advantage of elderly people. I just think in general, she's sort of a little bit more of a housewife that I like to see personally. Um, and I think she's been really open about her storylines. Uh, so anyway, I, I think it was a weird cut right there where she sort of saying that line where we have that shock in between her arms towards Dolores. And I felt like they manipulated the dialogue a little bit there. If you can hear it right here, you'll hear it. So Dolores who? We're good. 
I'm not really sure, but you know, a lot of times they'll manipulate dialogue for length or just to get to the point. Um, I don't know what it was, but uh, I just felt like it was manipulated there. Oh no, oh no. Oh my God. Here's the thing, Jennifer, if you have a problem with me, come to me. You just okay, so they're kind of doing this buildup that basically like Dolores is getting on her feet, right? And so they're doing these reactions of people, the music, you can hear it going, dun 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 oh, no. dun dun oh, no. dun, oh, dun, dun right and then as soon as she stands up you get this big cymbal sound oh no oh no oh my god you get sort of like the flourish of the end of the build-up and you know at the end of the day it's just dolores standing up but they have to make it seem like you know jaws has reached the boat basically so they have that music building up to it they do that big sound when she stands up and now i want you to watch something it was kind of an interesting cut to me. It's a right about now. Uh, I, I, I just want to watch it with you guys. Let's go. With me, come to me. You just bad mouthed me. I didn't on you until you on me. You talked about me to every. Okay, so I thought that was such an interesting piece because. First, we show Dolores standing up, right? Which is sort of in our minds going to be like, okay, Dolores is facing off to Jen. We know Dolores was a, you know, a, a PO. She was a parole officer and she's, you know, tough Jersey type, <laughs> type woman. Um, and, and we've also heard that she laid hands on, you know, I, I, I don't know, she's gotten in fights before, right? So we're like, oh, something's going to happen, right? But then interestingly enough, as she's talking to Jen, we don't have any shots of her like there's no camera time for her in fact they even hang on jen for a while and then they finally cut to dolores but we get all this kind of audio of dolores talking it's so interesting to me because i know a camera was on her i know for sure i always just wonder like why did the editors not choose to use that footage all I can think about, and this is just my random theory, is that space in time, in, in kind of the space of the backyard, didn't feel that big, didn't feel big enough, right? So they built this moment, bah, 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 boom, she stands up. Oh my gosh, what we're thinking, like Jennifer's in danger, there's gonna be a physical fight, we're gonna have something go down. And then I honestly believe that she probably stood up, she probably got out of the pool, which <laughs> sometimes it's just, it doesn't look that graceful. Maybe she got up, stood up out of the pool and then maybe she was just face to face with Jennifer. Like there wasn't her storming over or anything like that. Just spatially wise, maybe it just, um, I don't know, like was anticlimactic. So I'm wondering if that's why they didn't show her or if they were trying to put some suspense in us. Like when we cut back to her, is she gonna be right up in her face? Like what's it gonna be like? But it was, you know, anticlimactic anyway because we cut back to her and she's just kind of standing there like talking to Jen. I just thought that was a weird cut. It really stuck out to me and I wanted to bring it up to you guys. But yes, wait, I didn't talk Jennifer. about you. How about clean slate? I was talking about you at Margaret's because I was caring I'm about and wanted idiot. you to Okay. So we see that Teresa has gotten in the middle, right? We cut to Teresa and she's like, how about clean slate? Like let's make this right. Um, obviously that's kind of where Teresa's mind is at, this clean slate stuff, which um man, I you know I think with the Melissa and Joe and Teresa stuff, I really think that is the best move for them. Like there's been so many transgressions, I think on both sides. And at the end of the day, they are family. And I feel like it's like, they should just literally like pretend the past. They should do the thing like in Men in Black, like where the pen, you know, like flashes and they forget everything that ever happened. I feel like that would be their absolute best bet in terms of going forward. There's just too much water under the bridge. And I feel like Joe is so conflicted because you know, it's his wife, but it's also his sister. So he's got to stand by his wife and be a good man, but it's also his, you know, his blood and he wants his family so bad. And I do think Melissa knows that she's, you know, gotten in the middle of them in some ways. And Joe knows he's let her get in the middle in some ways, but also Teresa's had bad behavior. Like everyone's done wrong. Like that's what they should just stand in a circle and be like, we've all acted like a-holes. Let's just do the men in black thing and let's move forward. Like, that's what I want. I know everyone like hates on Melissa or hates on Teresa and they're like teams, but I'm just like, man, this isn't just a show. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like these people, when the cameras are gone, like it's, I just want them to, you know, make it happen, but maybe it wouldn't be as exciting to watch.
if that was what was going on. Okay. Come to then me. Then you should have called me. Because I me called you. You badmouth me to everybody. And you badmouth me, of not me being too. You sandwich anyone? Who's is that? No, somebody? Okay. So here we're starting to get into probably my least favorite character that's been added to the show is this woman right here. Throughout the rest of the episode, she had some little kind of like quippy moments that I thought were kind of funny. But uh, in this scene, I really, it lost me. It lost me. And this is such an interesting point to bring up to you guys because it, have you ever been watching a movie or a TV show and you've been super into it and then a character enters or a scene happens or something happens with the story that totally loses you? Like I was watching this movie the other night. I cannot even think. I think it's called Den of Thieves. I don't know if you guys have seen that. And there was this point in the movie where the plot kind of shifted where things weren't making sense. And I found myself checking out and I really, I thought about you guys and I thought about the housewives. The movie, by the way, got me back in the end. It came back for me. But I just wonder if you guys check in with yourselves. Like, has there ever been something you've been watching and you're like, this just is not like, I, I'm, I'm, I was into it and now I'm out of it. I always want you to check in on what characters have entered, right? Or maybe what tiny little plot point changed. A good movie or a good storyline, it's going somewhere and you know where it's going, but it, it deviates a little bit to kind of keep you on your toes, right? But you also kind of want to know where it's going we like consciously and subconsciously want to know like this is the path we're on this is the game we're all playing right and and we go along for the ride but as soon as a character comes in that maybe it acts uh you know a bad actor can ruin something like it ruins your trust in the movie you're sort of like oh like this doesn't feel real anymore and it brings you out of it or a move that they make like if you've ever been watching something where they like do something they're like these capable you know police officers and they do something so dumb and it's not even called out like it's different if they do something dumb and then that becomes a plot point you did something dumb right but if they do something dumb and then they're just like they don't even mention it i'm always like oh man you lost me i have to say that this character i forget her name unfortunately she made me kind of lose myself with jersey i was watching and i was like oh no if this is just subconsciously, I was like, I, I, I know what she's trying to do. She's playing a character on the show. You guys come at me all you want. I'm not saying she's a bad person. I'm just saying I'm sure she's seen the show. She kind of knows what, you know, the camera cutting to people doing funny things. I've heard her saying little funny things in the background where she probably thinks the camera's going to grab her. I just get this feeling that she thinks that she's like funnier and quippier. Sorry, I'm totally ranting, but you, the housewives, you guys are not, <laughs> I'm talking to you guys. No, you guys know the audience out there. These housewives are not writers. They're not actors. They shouldn't assume themselves to be that, you know, anytime there's moments in there where you can see, um, you know, some, a little bit of producing going down, we are all way smarter than that. They underestimate the audience. They think they're funnier and smarter than the crew. They're probably the ones that like watch a TV show with their family and like say like, oh, this is going to happen and they get it right like half the time and their family thinks that they're geniuses. Like that's the vibe I get with her because this whole sandwich bit, like it got me angry. You can tell I've just talked now for five minutes. I'm so sorry. If you're still watching, I'm so sorry, but <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm upset at this point, but let's, let's keep going. Fine. Can I have it? Go ahead. Fabulous. Delicious. Yeah, Thank I you. finally you said it after that's all the show, and if that's what that's you finally think, Right. Okay, so she got her moment. She wanted to bite her sandwich with a really aggressive thing like, oh, I'm so sick of these ladies and I'm gonna bite my sandwich, you know, hardcore. I'm not afraid to eat on camera. I'm the like voice of reason. She did the thing that she thought she was doing. I personally started going, oh no, please, Bravo, please, please cut her out of the rest of the season. I can't have someone who's so aware of the cameras on my screen. Um, I was listening to uh, Bitch Sesh, which I absolutely love their podcast. And they were telling, they were talking about how like Teresa is like still unaware of the cameras, which I thought was the best take. Like I absolutely feel like that is Teresa. Like Teresa, after all these seasons, she still, still makes moves and says things where I'm like, she's just living her life like i think there's a, a level of delusion that housewives have to have where they can just check out 
right? The cameras don't even like really matter to them because they're so focused on what they're saying or whatever it is. She had her little moment. She ripped into her sandwich. That's not how she eats a sandwich. I guarantee you that was trying to put on a bit. I can just guarantee you. <laughs> okay. So, but while that's going on, right, we have Dolores and you can still hear the audio, of course, of Dolores and Jen getting into it in the background. And that's sort of supposed to be like a comedic aside, like, oh, this is going on, but she's only focused on this sandwich. Like, isn't she so relatable? She's kind of like you guys, but nope, I don't buy it. Get rid of it. Not so my bread. Delicious. You put mustard on it. It's delicious. Well, you said that was up. Okay, so you can even see it right there with her. I'm sorry, I'm not just coming down on her, but this is definitely character, storyline, production stuff. Uh, it truly is. It's not, I'm not just like, like again, she might be the nicest person ever, but just in terms of leaving her bits in. Uh, I'm, it's annoying me. She's like, oh, you know, you put mustard on it. You can even see in Melissa where Melissa's almost like, it's so split second, it's so subtle, but you can see it in Melissa where she's just like, why are you saying that? Like, you wouldn't say that to me. You can just tell she's trying to come up with a line that might be funny in the middle of two women screaming at each other. Oh, you put mustard on it. Like you can just, it seems like bad improv. Like it's just terrible to me. Maybe I'm triggered <laughs> because when I was little, I was put into acting and there were like improv classes that you do. And it was terrible improv. Like the people, you know, kids trying to improv. It's just so, so terrible. And I, I, maybe I'm just triggered. Anyway, you can see a moment from Melissa where she, you know, she kind of looks at her like, are you being, and then she's like, yeah, it's delish. Like, I really felt like in that moment right there, Melissa's like engaged on this fight. She's not trying to ham something up for the cameras. I know she's made up storylines in the past, but in terms of this moment, I just felt like she had like a real reaction, like you're being weird. Two tree, come on. Oh yeah. yeah. Like if, Wait, but Teresa, after how many things thing? she said about me? Yes. How after many, how, how many? Oh, I don't have to write for this. I'm this. not a Okay. I think Dolores is someone, you know, people have a lot of opinions of her. I just think she's someone who's truly like, herself in front of the camera as well. Um, but she also, uh, I don't know, the delusion isn't quite there in the same way as like Teresa, but I think she's like pretty authentic. What do you guys think? I'd love to hear your takes. So, so, like account you guys, 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 neither one of you are owning your part in this. It's never gonna get anywhere. Jen you do it's, it's I wrong. Okay, so I loved this. Okay, so her name is Jen, I'm sorry. So Jen Kessler, yeah. So she comes in, again, it feels very written to me. She was like, okay, they're having this fight now. After I got my two funny moments, I'm gonna come in and try to break it up. I'm gonna be the hero about it, right? And the way Dolores shuts her down is so authentic to me. Like, it feels like Dolores is really in it, this woman's writing, and Dolores is like, seriously, like, no, you need to go because you don't even know the situation, but she's really doing it. Like, she's really, really into it. Sorry, I feel like this is just a, a beat down on this woman's, you know, being on this show, but I promise, I'll lay off in a second, but there was just too many moments of her that I was like, oh, please don't. Place to I do it, wrong her. people to deal with. I always have to be the one to no, say but sorry. No, I can't with this. <laughs> okay, so the music comes in again as Dolores shuts her down, says wrong place, wrong time, right? They cut back to Jen Kessler and she's sort of like shaking her head, right? Now we're gonna get into another moment with her. I can't with this. I, 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 I don't want an apology. No, I'm, I'm saying, not giving like, one. I just want a I'm relationship. Gonna... There, I know she wants one. Oh, guys, I couldn't. Uh, maybe I'm thinking about now what I'm going to call this video, and maybe I should call it like the downfall of R H O N J and put this woman's face on there. Not trying to bring her down, but this is so fake to me. And again, think about a TV show or a movie that you've watched where the plot takes a turn and it totally makes you check out. And really to me, that is a trust thing. It makes you trust production less. If production thought that their viewers were gonna think this was real, maybe you guys thought it was funny, her eating the, the cheese like that. I guarantee you she's, that was not real. Like I can guarantee you, like put me on a, I don't know, like, put her on a lie detector test. She'd probably say, yeah, it's exactly what it was, but it wasn't. And the reason why it makes me mad is because I look at it and I'm like, this, we're, this is what the editors think we think would be funny and we think is real. What else are they gonna do? 
you know that's what trust is really all about just in general in life is like you know someone does something to break your trust like what else would they do it's like in any court case right if they would lie about this wouldn't they lie about this same thing with production same thing with movies or anything you hear the phrase a lot in uh, film and production where they say this is where we lost them this is where we lost them it's a moment in the actual movie or in the tv show where things got so strange or kind of went off the deep end they'll call it jumping the shark as well but that's kind of like that comes from uh, uh, the show Happy Days. I don't know if anyone's old enough to, to know that, but Happy Days was this long running show. And then there was this one episode where the Fonz was on a like a, a wakeboard and he like jumped over a shark and everyone, the audience was like, oh, this show is gone. Like it's done. If they think that's something that we would like, it's done, we're done with it. This to me, when I saw this and I saw her aggressively eating the cheese, I, it actually lost me with the rest of the scene. It made me like, go like this and I was like oh they don't trust they don't think that we're better than this or that we know more than this I was really frustrated by it obviously I keep talking about it so sorry <laughs> maybe I'm just in a bad space because they keep taking my videos down okay let's keep going I know you want listen one. you guys could... I think it's okay to just be how we are we're in the same place I'm we fine show with up. that Fine, that's Fine. it. Okay, so you hear the music, right? So when Dolores starts to kind of take it to a place like, okay, maybe we're gonna patch this up, the music comes in. We're in the same place. I'm we fine show with up. that. Fine. But it has that sort of curiosity tone. I should really break these music cues down with like these adjectives, but it does, it has a curious tone to it. They could have put some sentimental music in there, right, while she's talking about this to make us feel like, okay, well, actually things are gonna get patched up. What they're telling us with this cue is like, she's trying, but I don't think it's quite gonna get there. There's still more lean in moments coming. You should stay tuned. I don't think this is where it's gonna end. I think that's what the music is kind of implying. Fine, that's fine. It. That's yeah, fine. No, it's fine. We're well, good. I am done with caring about people who don't care about me. Ignore. Okay. Ign <laughs> It's just interesting to see uh, Teresa in this role. You know, usually it's other people <laughs> trying to tell Teresa to ignore and let things go. But anyway, like, you know, right in the middle of Jen's uh, confessional, usually they would cut to like a reaction shot or someone like doing something with their hands or like, oh, you know, that type of thing. But it was kind of interesting right in the middle of her confessional, they cut to Teresa actually telling her. Ignore. Okay. And again, I've told you guys, I think the stuff that they cut in between in the confessionals, I think is almost like they're reacting to the confessional. And I think this was, proves my point just as well, except it's actually someone talking. Ignore. That's done. Well, my whole party got shot to yeah. Can we toss something in a bowl again? Put it, put it in there. Jeez. They look, look. Okay, so the conflict ends, right? The music has a button on it. Nora, that's done. Cut to all of the people, kind of all of the players, right? They have the Melissa and the, the cheese eater. They have Dolores. They have Teresa and Jen. Um, and then the music is kind of like, okay, look, we're bending back to normal, getting back to normal, right? After this kind of blow up. Okay. Yeah, Musa. Do you feel better about that conversation or not much? I don't, I'm not looking for anything. Ignore so many people, they're no, all gonna be at your no. wedding. Okay, so interestingly enough, I believe this little exchange between Jen and Teresa happened in like a moment's time, right? But what they did was they cut it up into tiny little five second pieces and they cut it in between, you know, Dolores at the table with the other ladies, cut back to them to kind of show this is like two you know conflicting worlds going on Jen still having it go down no question it probably went down at the same time but the editors definitely went back and forth between the two just to kind of give you a balance of what's happening on you know either corner this it's like I swear I didn't escalate that conversation don't seat me them. Okay. put me in the Okay. I don't care because you know what I'm gonna be dancing. I know. and the same kind of thing that they did they did you could hear Jen's voice before you see her don't, don't seat me need them okay. put me in the okay. bleachers. Okay. so as the ladies are at the table they're finishing up their talk and you can hear Jen loud and clear again that might not have happened in the sequence it might not have been happening exactly at the same time but the editors wanted to kind of show that like you know it's it's 
it's resolved, but there's still stuff kind of going on under the surface. Hey guys, let me ask you an opinion. I just on told this. her to put me in the no, 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 no. She's doing the seating right, at her wedding. This is I was gonna, gonna do uh, like um open no seating arrangements. Well, <laughs> okay, so I thought that was a really interesting cut. You know, Teresa goes up to the table. She's gonna start talking about her seating arrangements and all of this stuff. I know when Teresa gets into this zone, and maybe you guys, you know, we've known her for so long, but I know sometimes when she starts to gather a crowd. <laughs> I hate to say it, but I think she's ready to kind of stir some stuff. And that was kind of the vibe I got when she went up and was like, I'm just going to like, you know, I just have something to ask you guys, right? As soon as she said that, I was like, oh, what's coming? And then they did a weird kind of cut. You can see it went from the wide shot and then they cut straight to her where she says, I was thinking of not having, you know, the seating arrangements. I think it's because probably in that wide shot, you know, they had to cut down what she said. I believe that she probably said a lot more than what they're kind of showing that she just basically walked right up to the group and said, went right into the seating arrangements thing. I think she probably had a lot more to say other than that, but they did that weird kind of cut to make it, you know, just for time's sake. Seating arrangements. Well, oh that, that's like probably that. a good oh. idea. Because last doing, time you had seating like arrangements, no, you had issues. Me and your brother. Okay. So, you know, Margaret says that you had issues. You hear this huge knife sharpening sound. They don't go straight to the flashback, they go straight to Teresa. Now, I think Teresa is probably one of the best housewives. Again, the delusion is there in a great way, but also like people think she's dumb, but I also think she's like super smart in so many ways. She's so layered and so complex to me that I just absolutely love Teresa. I'm not like team Teresa over team whoever. I'm just like team Teresa. I just think she's a great housewife. We missed her when she was gone um, and I'm, I'm happy to have her back. I always think that the editors tend to uh, favor a lot of Teresa on the screen. And that's because she is a magnetic presence. And this is, we can't ignore this when we're talking about production and editing because editors are very aesthetic. They look at things and they're like, okay, well, how is this gonna work out? Like, how does this fit into the aesthetic of the scene, right? Just the overall aesthetic and, and, and sort of feel, not just the, the visual, but the feel. Teresa always has this magnetic personality. I think people just, like looking at her. So usually, you know, when they cut to, after someone says something, they cut to the actual thing, but instead they cut right to Teresa. We got a quick reaction from Teresa and then we get the flashback. Are there any your nieces and nephews minute, were at the friend table? Wait, she was sitting at my table. What? Because she asked to move to the other table. table. Are you kidding me? Oh my gosh. So here it was. So I was like, as soon as she brought up the seating stuff with Melissa, I was like, oh, See, I was so right when she gathers the people together and she's kind of got this like S-H-I-T eating grin on her face and she's like, I'm about to kind of start something. And then she brought it right to the Melissa stuff. She knew it was going to activate Melissa in such a big way. People use that word a lot, gaslighting. I think Teresa's probably like a really good <laughs> gaslighter when she wants to be. I think anyone can be, but I think she wanted to activate Melissa and then she wanted to stand there and be like, why are you acting crazy? Um, that's how I felt about that. Again, I'm not team anyone, but I just felt like that in that moment. She says it and then she says everything, if you can watch it, sort of out of the side of her mouth. Asked to move to the other table. And then they have this big sound with Melissa. To the other table. Are you kidding? This big reaction and then here we go, we're going right into it. Right I swear, Teresa. But I don't want to talk about hold it. Hold on, hold on. I thought right now you would never look at me in the eyes and lie, but you're gonna say I'm, that you sat I'm not me. lying. We got there, there was two tables. You so, um, you know, there's no music. I thought right now you would never look at me in the eyes and lie. And I don't know about you guys, but I tend to kind of believe Melissa in this situation. I don't think Melissa's like the best housewife. She's not my favorite or anything, but I kind of believe her here because of her reaction was so like, how dare you? And then Teresa's doing the thing like, why are you acting crazy? I've just seen it too many times in my life where I'm like, no, like maybe Teresa rewrote her own history in her head. So she's like, I'm not lying. I'm just really telling you what's true. Maybe that's the truth, but I just tend to, I don't know why. What do you guys think? Write in the comments below. Do you believe Melissa's rendition of things or Teresa's? I just, I really, I think I'm more team Teresa if I was to be a team, but I think in this moment, mm, I think I'm going with Melissa on this. Tables, you and Louie's family and Dina and your kids at one table and me and Jennifer and some hairdressers at the other table. No. Yes, it was. Do we even <laughs>
<laughs> so as she's saying all that, right, you get that curious music again. You and Louis' family and Dina and your kids at one table. You get the reactions from Teresa looking at her. I just know Teresa's just loving this so she can just sit back and be zen. And the music is going and going. And then when she finishes, she said the hairdressers, the music ends when she kind of does this. And then you cut right back to Teresa and she's like, oh, no. the editors are really helping build this moment into something that feels super kind of dramatic. But, and when really it was just an exchange between two women just talking about something that they disagree on, but they have to build this up, right? Because in the coming scenes to come and in the whole season to come, we know a huge storyline is the stuff, the tension between Melissa and Trey. So we need to have this, have some weight to it. Not just them having like a quick little argument over seating arrangements. Came to me and apologized for not being at your table. You were like, I'm sorry guys, don't like make a big deal over this. In an Italian family, it's a big Okay, so you can hear the music a little bit in the background. It's a little bit playful. For not being at your table. You were like, I'm sorry guys, don't you like make a big deal over this. Else. It's that same sort of curious track. And then they cut to Dolores kind of bolstering this storyline again. It's a big deal where you sit. We as the audience, we might be like, why is this such a big deal, right? The editors and the producers and everyone, they know that we might have that question. Why is this such a big deal between them? So they probably, when Dolores was sitting down for her confessional said like, why do you think they're so crazy about this seating thing? Why is Melissa so on one side and Teresa so on other? And they got exactly what they needed from Dolores, which is basically to answer a question in the viewer's heads, in our heads. Because I know for me, I was watching it going like, this is some petty stuff. As soon as Dolores said that, I was like, oh, Okay, it's a big deal. It's a huge deal in this culture and uh, that's why it's just made so much more of a deal. Deal where you sit. Why wouldn't I want my only brother to sit why. right next it's to not me? A, you were and sitting next to Louis sisters. I, I swear, my mother and father, my four daughters. That what? We so they're, you know, Teresa's doing the thing that housewives do, swearing on their family, which I think is just such a strange place to take it. I always am so amazed when they take it there. But I also, whenever they do, I'm always like, oh, they really believe what they're saying because I don't think they would really swear on their kids' lives or whatever if they didn't totally believe it, whether it was a rewritten history or not. I just think, again, it's interesting because they are pushing this storyline. They keep, We keep seeing Melissa standing up. She's sitting down. She's standing up. She's sitting down. But we're not seeing her do those things. So this conversation could have gone on a lot longer. It could be totally out of sequence. We have no idea. We'll never have any idea. You know, it's just one of those things. Like when you have a lot of tension with someone and literally they could like, you know, open the door wrong and you're like, you, you know, it's just like an explosion. Like they are just like on the brim when they see each other. And so anything can really set them off. Four daughters. That means what? We were supposed, supposed to be there? Yet. Okay, not fine. The Why would I lie? You told me you felt bad that they weren't sitting at your yeah, table. Yeah, of course she feels bad. So she no. seemed to be unaware that that was How happening. Could you not? Louis and I okay, so the music is sort of, it almost is taunting us a little bit, this music. You told me you felt bad that they weren't sitting at your yeah, table. Yeah, of course she feels bad. So she because it's not resolving. It keeps stopping and we get these big, like, you know, uh, sound effects, but then it goes right back into it again, almost like it's continuing, <laughs> you know, which I think actually goes along with our feelings when we watch this, we're like, really? Like 13 seasons later, this is the stuff we're still talking about? Like, if I were Melissa, I would literally remove myself. I would be like, you cannot talk to me. I would tell my brother, my, oh gosh, is that like a Freudian slip? No. I would tell my husband, we have so much water under the bridge. She's done some stuff to me I don't like. You know that. But listen, I, what matters to me most is that you guys are cool because your parents are gone. You guys are all you got in terms of family. What happens if I go? You know what I mean? Like, I don't want me to have to be like, to leave physically, <laughs> like to, in order for you guys to get back together, it's just too much between us. So leave me out of the equation and have a great relationship with them. Like that's what I would hope she does, but it's like, she just, she can't do that. It's, I, yeah, I, I get both sides. It's, it's a weird one to watch, but the music is taunting us. That's my whole point of my little rant. I went up to my brother and listen, even told him you were supposed to be sitting at our table. I don't give a 
So then why way. would you bring it up in New York? Because we were fighting. You were yelling at your brother, calling him a piece of shit, basically. Okay, so it's interesting that they brought that up there because just earlier in the episode, I think there was this piece where Teresa said to someone like, I saw Melissa in New York and we had the best time. And so now Teresa's bringing up this like, why would you talk about this in New York? And then Melissa starts talking about how, you know, you were yelling at your brother and this and that, and we were having this terrible time. To me, I'm like, ooh, <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> Didn't you just say you had a great time? So again, we go back to trust thing, but it's totally different type of trust because it's just us as the audience trusting a character rather than trusting the production and the entire team behind something that we enjoy. I see that with Teresa. She kind of said, yeah, me and Melissa had the best time. And then now it's coming out that they obviously didn't because they got in big fights over stuff. It's kind of like, hmm, if she'd lie about that, what else would she lie about type of thing? Basically, no, what do you mean? I, I was trying to you make a being, point. You were horrible to us in New York. The engagement well, thing, the wedding I thing. If you don't want to own that either, that's cool. All right, this is why I didn't. So one point I wanted to bring up again about this Jen Kessler character, they cut to her again, kind of having a very minor reaction to the fight. I feel like just from an editorial standpoint, if the editors just did not leave those moments in, the biting the mozzarella and stuff like that, it would actually discourage future cast members from trying to do stuff like that. I remember there's this one uh, moment in Potomac, the latest Potomac, that I was gonna cover with you guys in the live if my stream wasn't shut down. But basically, Karen says this big line. I have never yes, had to sell my food yes, I will be yes, sure to let you know if I ever get to that point, Ashley. She expected it to be bigger than it was. And it turned out they didn't even really have the camera tr on her face at that time. They didn't even like give her that light. And I was actually like, I wonder if the editors did that on purpose. Like, let's not encourage them to try to have grand memeable moments because that's not what the housewives is about this is about watching people that don't know the cameras are on them and they're just living their lives and making choices and you know I, anyway I I just wish that they had not given her that moment I actually was actually scrolling Instagram and I followed this guy called drunk drawn he did one of the girl eating the mozzarella and I was like oh, don't give it to her like don't this is going to encourage bad behavior from many, many, many women to come. Please, <laughs> please, let's not encourage it. All right, this is why I didn't ask you. Let's just put it on the table. It was about Margaret. I felt like you weren't sticking up for me. I mean, a now little bit. Me no, off. no, I'm no, not trying to. No. How many times did I? Okay, so the music comes in and changes. It's about Margaret. I felt like you weren't sticking up for me. We've had this sort of music taunting us because it feels like we're going around a merry-go-round a million times. But now we have the music feels a little bit heavier, a little bit more serious as we go into this thing where she's like, you know what? I'm gonna tell you the real thing. The real thing is that I'm just upset at you, right? That you didn't didn't stick up for me and then Melissa to me feels very real where she's like you know what at this point like I can't even now you're gonna piss me no, no. Off. I know we've all been at that point in a conversation where we're like you're so off base that like I'm not even now I'm really gonna get mad I tell you to shut up about Louis she said drop it Teresa's I said why do you keep talking it. it's not gonna change her mind she loves him if you would have told her Should to stop so I'm the bad I'm guy is that what is that what I just heard Please. I'm just telling you how so to me I felt like that was uh a really telling moment. So they had Melissa say, so I'm the bad guy, right? She raises her finger and then you hear this huge knife sharpening sound. I'm the bad guy. I felt like that was a wink and the nod from the editors to us. Like, yeah, she is. Like, yeah, she's your bad guy. <laughs> she's your villain. Just wait, you guys, you're gonna see it. It's coming up that, you know, I'm the bad guy is going to come up over and over, not just seeing that clip, but that is actually going to play out in this season. I really felt like that knife sharpening sound was intentional there. Uh, what do you guys think? I would love to know your opinions in the comments. Oh, I was feeling. Stop putting it on me. I was trying Stop to putting say, it on me. I didn't say, do it. I, was to say, I am sick I was of you putting on me. Something. You started. No, this is what's not happening uh, in my sorry, life uh, anymore. Okay. And then, of course, what Teresa did, she activated Melissa. Melissa's going crazy. And now Teresa can sit back and be like, wow, you are insane, girl. Like, calm down. You are have gone 
off the rails and you know that's just good housewives behavior i gotta give it to her my life anymore. anymore okay all right somehow some way all roads lead to melissa she will never blame herself you're my sister-in-law and to me okay so the music now is really big she will never blame herself you're my sister-in-law and to me now what are you guys thinking when the music starts to go like this do you guys watch and sort of like start to look down at your phone or think about the next thing you're gonna do because you know what this music is building into da, which is end of the episode, right? Or end of this scene. It's really a crescendo into something. And I'm sure whether you know it or not, your body is preparing to get up and go get another snack or whatever, because you know it's coming. I just like to have you guys check in with that. You guys are, uh, we're all so much more in tune with this stuff than we even know. So, and to me, family is everything. You know that. Oh, I'm so sick of this. Stop saying family, wow. family, yeah, family. I'm not saying family, family. So music is super dramatic. Oh, I'm so sick of this. Stop saying wow. family, family, yeah, family. I'm not saying family. Obviously this is, you know, a little conversation that's turned into a full-blown argument, but I really think that this is almost like the thesis of the entire season. Melissa is saying, you are, you keep saying that, but you're not living it. And Teresa's looking back at her and saying like, wow, like you're crazy. I feel like that is kind of what they're showing here, showing what's happening. Let's just see the end. Don't. Next time on The Real Housewives, I need you. Okay, so, dun, 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 right? The big music feels like we're in like, you know, a war scene or something. And then they cut to all of the people watching this go down and there are various reactions. And it's just supposed to get us into like, ooh, maybe not like a to be continued, but like, Ooh, this, there's a lot under the hood here. What are we going to do? Um, I was really interested in that upcoming scene where Louis calls out Joe Gorga being on a podcast talking about them and how Joe Gorga like goes crazy. Uh, I personally, the one thing that I just dislike about Jersey is all of the attention put on the men. I feel like probably the worst offender is Frank Sr. I don't know about you guys. I know everyone loves him. Get upset with me all you want, but I believe he puts on so much for the camera. I believe he thinks he has these little quippy one-liners. He's very aware to the camera to me. Do you remember when like they were filming last season and he was all of a sudden he was like living with Dolores and he's like, oh yeah, I just happen to have these three months off or something. I was like, dude loves the camera. <laughs> like needs to, needs to stop it. I actually think I would love him in real life. I love having like a little bit of the men in there, um, but I just don't like a ton of it. Like I, I, and it's not even like a man woman thing. I just don't think they're as dynamic characters as our Jersey women are. So anyway, that's all I'm gonna say about that. Um, yeah, I feel like that new friend of uh, Jen, I, I really hope that they uh, can kind of cut out her putting stuff on because that was so clear to me. If I was editing this and this was like in a movie or something, I can guarantee you uh, the director would be like, we need to fix that person's performance, meaning, <laughs> cut them out because it was just too put on. It was, it definitely, I don't know about you guys, but I would love to know in the comments below if her sort of silliness made you laugh or if it actually made you feel like, oh, like I've lost a little bit of trust in this whole thing as it is. Just curious, maybe I'm just on edge. <laughs> I appreciate you guys so much as always for liking, subscribing, sharing, uh, tweet and DM Andy. Let's keep this channel going. I don't want it to get uh, taken away before it's even started, but um, if it ever does get taken away, please just know I have appreciated you guys so much. So thank you so much for watching and until next time. Bye.